Hi and welcome to The Lamp in the Library. I'm Graham. I'm Kim. And today we're going to be looking at a couple of non-fiction books that we've read recently. What do celebrated Soviet filmmaker Andrei Tarkovsky and renowned children's programmer Fred Rogers have in common? I don't think this topic has been covered enough in contemporary YouTube videos. So we are going to fill that void today by looking at a couple of works on these uh, two geniuses in their respective fields, mm -hmm. uh, starting with a biography of Fred Rogers that Kim has read. Yeah, so I read the book, um, Exactly As You Are, The Life and Faith of Fred Rogers by Shea Tuttle. For those who may not know, Fred Rogers was the creator and host of the children's um, television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and this was a phenomenally successful public television program that ran for many, many, many years. Uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Rogers was partly inspired to create this television programming because he was disappointed by the programming that was made for children on television at that time. He found it quite crude and he found that often the entertainment was just speaking down to children and he wanted to create a program that really spoke and respected children and their intelligence and spoke to them at their level and wanted to bring a real sense of love and um, inner sense of respect and dignity to children. So that's part of what went into creating his program. You may have watched a recent documentary about him and there was also a feature film that starred Tom Hanks recently. So Mr. Rogers has sort of been in the air but one thing that really struck me, because Graham and I both saw the documentary, was it mentioned that while he was working full time on his children's television show, he completed his education at a divinity school to become um, ordained in the Presbyterian faith. And from that, his ministry was seen to be um, through the work he did on television. So I wanted to read something that got a little more into what his faith was and how it informed the work he did. And that's exactly what this book does. It's not too long, but it does give you a good biographical overlook of Fred Rogers' life. But throughout it, it's sort of showing you um, what his faith was and how it informed the work and decisions that he made. One of the things that I find um, really fascinating about Fred Rogers is that his faith is integral to the work that he did. It is through his understanding of his Presbyterian faith that he saw that everyone should feel that they are welcome, everyone should feel that they are loved for who they are, and everyone should be treated how they would like to be treated. So he wanted to share these messages through the work that he did. But it's important to note that when you would watch his television program, you'd never think it was like religious or like in your face Christian because he didn't explicitly say these things. He didn't explicitly share his faith in his television program. Those were just the guiding principles behind the work that he did because it was very important that no one felt that they weren't welcome to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. So, you know, he, if he made it explicitly Presbyterian, it would leave so many people out. So he made the conscious decision not to do that. And I think Mr. Rogers is a very interesting figure because he almost seems otherworldly. Yeah, he does. He's, he's, he just resonates goodness and he's almost saintly. Yeah, so then you almost feel like, you know, oh, I couldn't be like him. He's just like one of these figures that's just beyond whatever I could accomplish in life, like be that good. But when I was reading the book, she shares a lot of anecdotes from interviews she had with friends of Mr. Rogers and um, em former employees. And one of the really touching moments in the book is she shares that there was an employee on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood who found out that her husband had a terminal illness. So she had to leave her work. And Mr. Rogers would come and he would, you know, support the family and just, you know, it says like he'd come and he'd pray with them and just try to be there for them. And unfortunately, as time went on, the husband, um, he did pass away and he passed away in his sleep and the wife woke up and found her husband had died and was 
there in the bed beside her and then she also heard someone at the door so she went down and answered it in this state of just total shock and despair and who was there but Mr. Rogers and he explained that he just you know he had been praying in the morning and just had this feeling that she needed something so he went to see if there's anything she needed or if he could help in any way and she noticed that he was licking his lips when he was at the door and because she worked for him she knew that he did this when he was feeling awkward or uncomfortable or maybe a little foolish so he it's not like the amazing things he did came easily all the time it's that I think that grounding in his faith and a grounding in what he thought was right would help push him to do the things that he felt he had to and it wasn't easy and I thought that was a powerful message because sometimes you know we fall down a lot as humans and we don't always live up to maybe what we want to be but Mr. Rogers example can inspire us to you know push past feeling awkward and foolish sometimes and just to keep going and try to be you know the best person that we can be so I really really enjoyed this book and um, if you're interested a little more in Mr. Rogers life I would recommend it that's really interesting because I'm seeing a bit of overlap in your description of Mr. Rogers with um, Andre Tarkovsky. So I uh, recently uh, have read this book. It's called Sculpting in Time and it's written by Tarkovsky uh, and it's basically um, a personal account of his life and filmmaking um, but mostly it's kind of um, an overview of his philosophy of art mm. and um, you may know, if you don't know who Tarkovsky is, was, um, he was a one of the most celebrated filmmakers of the 20th century, and from the 60s to the 80s, he made a number of renowned films, including uh, Stalker, Solaris, The Mirror, um, Andrei Rublev, um, and kind of like Fred Rogers, he would not talk down to his audience. Now his audience was different than uh, children, but um, the impetus for writing this book apparently was because he was receiving so many letters from people <laughs> who had seen his movies and did not comprehend what they had seen. <laughs> so he decided to uh, write this book, Sculpting in Time, in response to that. Mm. Um, and what's interesting is that he doesn't really um, walk you through the the symbolism in his films. He uh, he does kind of reference the the movies, and he does give a little bit of background information on the process he went through in creating these films, but uh, not to the extent that um, you really gain a lot of insight into his films. He he, he talks just as much about um, kind of contemporary filmmakers that he admires, like Bresson and Bergman, um, and he just kind of um, touches on his films to um, make points about what he really is interested in talking about, which is a philosophy of art. And like Fred Rogers, he has this philosophical underpinning to his work. And he was uh, also deeply religious. He was Orthodox Christian. Mm -hmm. And he really believed in the spiritual potential of art and filmmaking. And, um, you know, he devised this kind of theory of filmmaking, which he called um, Sculpting in Time, which is the, which is the title, um, which I think is a very poetic term. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking of poetry, uh, his father was a renowned Soviet poet. Uh, his name was uh, Arseny Alexandrovich Tarkovsky. Um, and he actually uses, if you see his films, he actually uses his father's poetry in his films. That's really beautiful. And um, he uses the poetry actually in this book as well. It's, um, it's just kind of placed uh, throughout the book, um, examples of his father's poetry. Um, I'm really glad I found this book. I had to do some kind of digging to find it. It was, it was harder to find than a lot of books, um, but I've been wanting to read it for a long time. Um, and 
I just thought it was a really fascinating look at uh, this man's life and his work. And, and like Fred Rogers, I think that he really dedicated his life to his art mm -hmm. and um, the message he wanted to communicate through his art. Mm -hmm. And he makes this distinction between, you know, directors who are, um, you know, just creating product. Mm -hmm. um, and directors, um, of art, artists and filmmakers who have this higher calling to, mm -hmm. to kind of um, connect with the infinite. And mm -hmm. that's clearly what he sees his role as. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely get the sense in this book that uh, Tarkovsky was not a humble man and he had a very high opinion of himself <laughs> and his art. And maybe that's a contrast. Yeah, that's a contrast, him, I think. And yeah. Fred Rogers. Um, but, you know, he definitely saw that his films had a higher spiritual purpose. And um, it's interesting to read about his theories of art and the mm -hmm. philosophical underpinnings of his films, which I think um, next time I watch one of his movies will really add that, that other layer to his films. I mean, even watching the movies, you could tell that this is a, a, a very intelligent person who is trying to communicate some some deeply personal themes in his work. Mm -hmm. And he even says in the book that when he puts biographical elements into his films, those are the elements that resonate the most with his audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, Sculpting in Time by Andrei Tarkovsky, I do highly recommend this book if you're in any way interested in this director's work or filmmaking in general or, you know, art in general. This is a good uh, a book about, um, you know, art and, and uh, the artist. Yeah, I'm hoping to read the book too after some of the parts you've um, shared with me while you were reading it because it definitely speaks to some of the thoughts that I have on art and the purpose of art and I always find those sort of books really fascinating. A lot of what you said reminds me of some of what Tolstoy said about art and um, I'm wondering if he, he talks about Tolstoy at all. He it? does actually. He, he uh, references Tolstoy and Dostoevsky uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit in this book. So, you know, maybe that shows how <laughs> a bit of lack of humility when he's comparing his own work to those of great Russian oh, artists. Oh, he compares himself to Tolstoy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying he does. I'm just saying the yeah. fact that he, he references them at all. Um, but yeah, yeah, he 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 definitely. Um, I think I think you can definitely say that he, he his work, um, you know, it, it stands with the the greats of of Russian art. So, right, yeah, I think it's interesting too that both figures, you know, they understand that you don't have to um, make things at the crudest level for people to get meaning from them yeah. and to inspire people. And it, it sounds like both artists were you know um, responding to the art they saw around them yeah and absolutely. I'm always inspired by um, people who no matter what the situation you know whatever whatever form of art or craft it is that they're like I just don't really like what I'm seeing so I'm gonna make something that I like that I think needs to be out there and also inspired by people who who their motivation is for something that's beyond the material and almost like they're tapping into something else. Even though it sounds like he wasn't very humble, it sounds like, you know, he's still he's tapping into something that is still beyond him. Yes. I don't know if he would think that per se, but it's definitely worth a read. Mm. So there you have it. Uh we have compared Andre Tarkovsky and Fred Rogers. Um, I don't think anyone has done this in the past, so <laughs> if you're looking for a topic for a master's thesis, yes. you can start here yeah. on this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel down below and hit the bell so you always know when we have a new video. And please share your thoughts in the comments on um, Tarkovsky or Mr. Rogers or you know your um, philosophy of art, simple questions like that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep well. Keep reading. Bye. <laughs>